Hi, this is Sam Pettit here, and I wanted to do a quick video just showing you how I rewrap my Pearl Reference Pure kit using vinyl wrap. Now, this is the same stuff that they wrap cars with, and I bought it on Amazon. It was around about $150, I think, delivered, and that was enough to do at least five drums. There's probably enough there to do six or seven. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just removing all of the hardware off the shell. Now this kit was already wrapped, so I did this about a year ago, and you can see it's all really good condition, and this kit probably did about 200 gigs with that wrap on it, indoors, outdoors, everywhere. Um, and it's really good outside this stuff, it doesn't bubble, it doesn't warp, and it kind of protects all of the lacquer underneath the kit as well, which is something I hadn't really thought about. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking off all of the existing wrap because I wanted to change colour. And it's easy enough to do, you just got to take off all of your lugs, your breather hole, your badge, etc. And as you can see here, I'm just heating it up with a hairdryer, you could use a heat gun. And that just softens it up enough to make it come off a little bit easier. And you can see that underneath all the lacquer, there's no residue, none of the lacquer's pulled out or anything. So that's the best thing about this. It's all completely reversible. Okay, so you can see now we're getting into it. I've got my sheet, and I think that was about five foot by 18 inches, I think, that sheet. So it was enough to go around the 16 inch floor tom that I got here. Um, you can see I'm just measuring it up, just seeing where the bearing edges are, and um, there's nothing too scientific about this. You could get a ruler and you could measure your shells, but I actually quite like doing it like this, where you just find where the bearing edges are and just make a bit of a rough mark. So I'm just roughly marking out where my seam's going to go here and then I'll fine tune that in a minute when I go back and I make sure that all my cuts and everything are straight. Now this stuff is made by Vivid Vinyl and the good thing about it is it's got all this writing on the back of it that's all in a really straight line. So you can see here when I'm cutting it I haven't actually ruled any lines or anything because underneath those logos, and you might not be able to see it so clearly here, is everything's all in a straight line so you just got to follow that and uh, as long as your markings are good where you've actually measured it then you should be fine. Now because I'd already re-wrapped a kit before I was pretty confident with this where I measured it out so that there was just about five millimeters either side of the bearing edge just kind of showing so I was pretty confident that I could rewrap it without it going crooked and um, having to trim it up at the end. So, but if you haven't done it before, you might want to actually make it a little bit bigger than the shell and then trim it up while it's actually on there. But what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting it so that it's a little bit shorter than the bearing edge. Uh, here is just at the end, I'm just roughly cutting it just so I can see how much overlap I've got. So once I found how much overlap I had between the two seams, I just make a little mark here and then go back and I actually use the ruler for this to make sure it was nice and square. And the reason that is, is because that was the seam that was actually ended up being showing. So you've got the factory cut seam at the other end and that's the one that I use to actually line up to make sure that the wrap is on straight. So after that's all trimmed up, I'm just doing a bit of a dry run here. Now this is where you're going to need some clamps from Bunnings. I think they're only a couple of bucks each and I had about eight or ten of them I think. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a dry run without using any of the adhesive that's on the back of it, without taking any of the paper off, just to make sure it's all lined up and it's all square. And you'll see here I'm using my big hairy mitts to smooth it all down just to make sure that it's all straight. So this is the most important part of the whole process I think is just making sure it's all straight because if you're a couple of millimetres out then it's going to go on crooked and that's when you're going to have to trim it up and God forbid uh, see some of the actual finish underneath it. So you'll see what I'm doing here is just using the clamps just before I actually take any of the paper off and um, reveal any of the adhesive underneath it.
So this is the next step. You take off your backing paper and reveal a bit of that adhesive there. You can see it's not too sticky. It's not ridiculous that it's going to fold back over on itself and stick to itself. Uh, so what I like to do here is actually cut off a bit of that paper. And you've got to be careful here. Try not to get any little bits of paper actually on the adhesive part because that's going to make a little bubble or a little indent on your wrap. So this is why the clamps are so important because, and this is the most important step, is making sure this part is correct and making sure it's all nice and straight. You can see I'm taking a fair bit of time just getting that ready. And it's pretty good, you can take it off if you've kind of got a bubble, which I've got over there on the left. Now this is a secret weapon, it's a little plastic squeegee that you buy from the same place you get your wrap from and it's got a bit of felt folded over the top so you can see I'm just working away here just getting rid of those bubbles and it's not a real hard process at all. Uh, you can work towards yourself or away from yourself, whatever it takes to get rid of those little bubbles. Um, the big thing is to make sure that it doesn't actually fold onto itself, that's when you get a bit of a crease, but air bubbles are pretty easy. And like I said before, it's got this texture underneath it that seems to, it's called air lock or something like that, and it just seems to not be too hard to get rid of the bubbles. And this isn't the stuff that you cover your books with, this is the proper stuff, and I'd recommend spending a little bit more, don't buy the cheapest stuff you can find. So take your time with this and do it properly because you don't want to be left with a whole bunch of bubbles and stuff everywhere and so I'm also checking that it's straight so you can see it's all going on pretty straight you can see that that line along the bearing edge is all still intact I'm just taking a little bit off there because there might have been a bubble that I couldn't get rid of and so yeah like I said before it's actually quite easy to reapply it. So that first 10 centimetres, 20 centimetres or so of the wrap is the most crucial one because if you've got that crooked then it means that the whole rest of the wrap is going to go on crooked as well. So if you've got that pretty straight then the rest of the job is actually pretty easy. So you can see here I'm just removing all of the clamps now because it's already stuck down in that first 20 centimetres or so. Um, and what I'll do now is just start removing the backing paper and just working my way with the squeegee like I was doing at the start there. There's no real trick to this until we get to another part here where I actually had to cut off some of that paper because it was really starting to get in the way, but you'll see that here in a second. So as you can see here, some air bubbles are a little more stubborn than others. The big advantage you have with wrapping drum shells is there's actually a lot of holes in the shell from where you've taken off all of your hardware and everything. So if you've got an air bubble, I was trying to direct them towards the holes in the shell, and that's a really good way to get rid of them. Or if you can direct them towards the bearing edge, the hardest air bubbles to get rid of are the ones in the middle. Now this is a technique I suppose I learnt where I'm pushing the air bubbles out and I'm pulling the paper away with my arm and I'm being really careful that I don't get any arm hairs or anything actually stuck to it because that would actually show up underneath. So I'm just kind of pushing away with my squeegee and I'm pulling the paper at the same time. And then when you get to the actual end of the roll, you can do it without pulling the paper. You can actually just push your squeegee and the paper will go away as you can see here.
So what I was talking about before is you actually start to get a fair bit of paper and it starts getting in your way. So I just scrunch it up like this and then I actually decided to cut it off and that made things a little bit easier. Again, being really careful that I didn't lose any little bits of paper fibre or anything onto the shell because that's definitely going to show up on it. Because the stuff is actually quite thin. And someone asked me whether it changes the tone of your drums and the good thing about it being so thin is it actually wouldn't change the tone of your drums at all. I can't see how it would do that. And no matter what, there's always one stubborn little air bubble that you just can't get out and it's always in the middle of the shell. And one thing I would recommend when you're doing this is to start off on some of the smaller drums. Obviously it's harder to do your bass drums and your floor toms, so I usually start off on a 12 inch tom and get a bit of a feel for it and just make my mistakes on that one or hopefully not make any mistakes but just improve your technique and um, then you're ready for the bigger drums. So this is what I was talking about before where the paper just comes off by itself when you get to the end of the roll. So I'm just again just taking my time, making sure I don't rush it. That's what I've done before, I've rushed things and I've always made a mess of it so I made sure I took my time with this one. And just like that, you're done. So that one drum took me about half an hour, so to do a whole kit, by the time you take everything off and put it all back on, it's a bit of an all day job, but take your time and you'll get some really good results. So here's a little trick that I stumbled upon. I had a stubborn air pocket that I just couldn't get rid of, so I pricked it with a needle and pushed it down and it went away. So it worked really well because this textured wrap hid that little pin prick, but I'm pretty sure it would work with a flat wrap anyway. So what I'm doing here is I'm just marking out where the badge went. Um, that was one of the harder jobs, is trying to locate where the screw holes were for the badge, but you can usually see them because this wrap is pretty thin. So I'm just marking it out there with my screwdriver so I can get that back on there properly. You might want to reapply a little bit of double-sided tape, but with these particular badges they've got screws on the side of them. Now my preferred method here is just poking out all of the holes with a screwdriver. The sucky thing about these reference drums is there's actually three screw holes, so a little bit more than what you would on a normal kit. But I'm just going through, just marking them all there, and then I start putting on the lugs and screwing them all up. It helps if you've got a drill here to put them all back on, save your wrists. And yeah, this is the most time consuming part is putting it all back together. But it's a good chance for you to have a look and just make sure everything's applied properly, everything's stuck down properly. And in this case it was, it was all good, so off to reassembly.
So job done, and I'm really happy with the colour of that. It's hard to tell on the internet sometimes with the pictures, but I was really happy with how it looks in real life, and I was happy with the way it all went on. I love the texture. So yep, job well done. Very happy. So the big reason I wanted to recover this kit is because I bought that 14 by 12 SNOM, I think they're called, over to the side there, and it was a slightly different colour, so I'm a little bit funny about things matching, so I thought I'll just recover the whole kit. But I wanted to do it so that it was reversible, and so this is the perfect solution for that, because I thought I love that there's nothing wrong with the lacquer underneath it, and I love that colour, but I just wanted to try something a little bit different. Plus it's good if you've got orphan drums like of a different colour, you can recover them all and you can make a nice big kit out of it. Thanks for watching and I hope it's given you some ideas and I hope you go out and try it for yourself. It's a fun little project and if you've got any questions, hit me up here. Cheers!